Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Gotham episode six video. You maybe saw some special things at the end of the episode. So just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. And don't worry, we, we haven't seen the last of Firefly for good, but she, she might be under wraps for a little while. The whole episode was about the dichotomy between people like Gordon and Catwoman who are all about the gray area in Gotham. They're like, you know, you can't be so extreme with the way you deal out justice, the way you treat people, and you can't be so nutters that you just go off the deep end like Firefly. This is Gotham, sometimes you gotta deal Batman's justice to get what you need. So the big antagonists of the episode were Firefly, who went completely nutters in the episode, even though they, they still kinda want her to be sympathetic, especially with all those crazy experiments they're gonna be doing on her in the Indian Hills Hospital that Wayne Enterprise owns. What I think is going on is they're, they're driving Michael Chiklis' character to one end of the spectrum, so Gordon being a hard ass doesn't seem bad. Like, they want Gordon to still seem like a good character, even though he's beating the crap out of criminals. And they want Catwoman, who is still committing a lot of crimes, to seem like a good character when she's standing next to Firefly, who just like full-blown jumps off the deep end. Starting with number five though, Butch gets a stump on his hand. This is one of the, the more fun parts of the episode. They, they argue about what to do with the bloody stump. And Barbara appropriately suggests that they go evil dead and give him the chainsaw hand. Not really clear what Barbara's been doing these last couple of episodes, maybe catching up on her horror films in between having sex with Theo and Tabitha and trying on different outfits. But the only thing I didn't like about them giving the mallet, like I love that they gave him a mallet, but I was hoping that he'd actually like smash some people's heads in like watermelons or something, something crazy, especially after last week's episode when they blew someone up with some C4. And they really ended up throwing it away by the end of the episode. Speaking of which, on to number four, everybody is treating everybody else like complete shit. Penguin is treating Butch like shit, Firefly's brothers treat her like shit, even Gordon is now treating people like shit. So if the big arc of this first half of the season is the reckoning that the Order of St. Dumas is bringing to Gotham. If a reckoning is coming to Gotham for Bruce Wayne, then a reckoning is probably coming for all these asshole characters that are treating people like shit. So Gordon, probably gonna get a reckoning. Michael Chiklis' character who's treating Gordon like shit, probably gonna get a reckoning. Penguin who's treating Butch like shit, also gonna get a reckoning. The real question is, is what form is that going to take? Like last season, Gordon already got busted down to regular cop status, so I don't think they're gonna do that again. But I feel like the obvious choice is to have Butch turn on Penguin, like somehow break his conditioning. That was the whole idea, like I thought that that was what Tabitha was supposed to be doing. When in actuality, it really looked like she killed him, even though he showed up at the end of the episode. That that scene just didn't, didn't really work. Her outfit was definitely nice to look at, but really it, it looked like she was trying to kill him. On to number three though, Catwoman and Firefly steal a bunch of money from human traffickers. This is just the show's way of telling you that even though these two characters are criminals, there's still people out there that are way, way worse. Like they don't want you to think of them as antagonists, even though technically they're villains. We're gonna make them seem good because they're stealing from people who are really terrible, selling women. If Firefly's character seemed a little inconsistent through the episode, like it seemed like she was going from zero to 60, like she's like this, this really quiet flower who's really shy, but the minute she puts her gear on, she turns into this dominatrix. They're just trying to convey her obsession with fire, like the same way Heatwave on The Flash is obsessed with fire. Although the actor that plays Heatwave sells it a little bit better than Firefly did, but to his credit, he's just like a much, a much more experienced actor. But if you didn't understand why Catwoman was like, was acting all weird when they were escaping, like she ran and she did like a, a, a backflip over that police car instead of just like sliding over it or running around, it's because they wanted Gordon to recognize her cat moves and like recognize her as Catwoman on the footage. That was kind of a setup for later, even if it was completely unnecessary. If you were running from police officers, you wouldn't start backflipping over everything. You would just, you would just like run around it. But to be fair to the characters, I feel like the actors are playing this the way the show is meant to be. The show is meant to be this heightened comic book reality. Like you have levels of reality. The, the most real comic book show out there right now was Daredevil season one. Regular dude that's blind getting the shit beat out of him, trying to beat up other criminals. Then you get to shows like The Flash that actually have people with superpowers, they have metahumans, but they play it a little bit straighter. You know, you have the Cisco character who is kind of like the voice of the comic books, just calling things out. And then you have shows like Gotham that are almost like the literal text of comic books. Like, like they, they play the way you would read a comic book with certain types of jokes, certain types of moments. The best example of that is when characters don't really act the way natural people would act. Like if you were in this situation and like a little girl pulled a gun on you, you would probably just rush her. Catwoman scene where she dropped down and like she took out all those hardened criminals, that, that completely unrealistic. But remember, this is a comic book show, so the actors are literally performing as if they are in a comic book. 
I wouldn't call it camp, but there is like some energy from the 60s Batman TV show. It can be a little bit weird if you're used to watching shows that play it a little bit more realistic. But on to number two, a series of unfortunate strangulations starring the Riddler. So he and Miss Kringle finally do the deed. High fives, high fives all around. Good job to Riddler for sealing the deal. However, he gets a little bit crazy when Miss Kringle admittedly baits him into telling her about killing the police officer. All of her dialogue completes setup, but remember, this is a comic book, like we're, we already know the outcome we're trying to get to. So the drama isn't so much in him spilling the beans, it's in how he spills the beans. I feel like one of the most comic book things that he's done all season is pull that badge out. See, I totally killed him, do you believe me now? Like, why is it so important that Miss Kringle believe him that he killed that police officer? It's, it's almost like he's proud that he killed him. Like he was waiting for her to give him the opportunity to tell her, even though he kind of made it seem otherwise last season. Like last season, it was something he needed to hide at all costs. I guess love just makes you crazy, but Miss Kringle is in a coma now. So the question is, is what's gonna happen when she wakes up? Will she wake up and turn him into the police? Just add one more reckoning to the scoreboard to be delivered at a later date. Finally, onto my number one WTF moment, Wayne Enterprises, the evil portion of Wayne Enterprises, has a secret research facility that's experimenting on metahumans, or people they believe to be metahumans. That's what the Indian Hills facility was. So I think it's pretty obvious what they're setting up here. At some point, some of these criminals will break out. Like they're just, they're teasing characters that we haven't seen yet. And I know some of you are trying to guess like who these characters are. They, they haven't revealed all the comic book characters they're bringing on, but I'm wondering if Hugo Strange is gonna rise out of this group of people. Strange is more of a psychological character, so he's tied more to Arkham storylines, but they haven't done as much with Arkham this year. It seems like this, this place down here is where they're gonna be surfacing a lot of their big, big villains. Just because of the relative ambiguity of, of when Gotham takes place in the timeline. So, you know, it's like 80s, 90s technology, but then they have some things that are a little bit more modern. I think they have a little bit more license with the way they do characters. Now, Livewire, for instance, like this, this chick here, I don't think this is Livewire because Supergirl on CBS is doing Livewire. And I don't think that Warner Brothers lets multiple versions of characters on shows. But we will probably see all of these characters that they teased in future episodes. So if there's something to be excited about, it's Gotham doing full-blown metahumans. I do think that some of them are metahumans. Firefly, however, is not. The reason they think that she is is because she's wearing that suit and it protected her from dying. They think she's immune to fire. And if it wasn't clear, that suit melted to her skin. I don't know if they removed it, but it might be bonded to her now. And like I've said earlier, they're, they're trying to demarcate different types of villains. You have your flat-out antagonistic villains like Theo, even though he's kind of sympathetic because of what happened to his family. And then you have these really tragic characters like Firefly that are driven to crime by a life of abuse. Sometimes it can be really obvious which characters the show wants you to root for, but they do that on purpose. Like they, they want you to see Firefly and, and think of her as a good character, despite being completely crazy. Let me know in the comments though, what did you guys think about the Firefly character? And when do you think that we're gonna see her again? Do you think it's gonna be like a couple more episodes or do you think that we'll follow up with Indian Hills next week? Part of me kind of feels like they'll just cut to her in like three or four episodes after it's been a couple weeks and they'll just let you imagine what has been done to her, like the atrocities that the doctors have committed experimenting on her. And don't forget, Theo is now going to be on the Wayne board, so he's probably going to gain access to these people. Bunder's Law, the guy that Theo killed, was kind of like the keeper of Wayne Enterprise's dirty laundry, so Theo found out about all these things that they were doing, so he probably knows about this place. So here's what's going on. There's a new episode of The Flash tonight. There's a couple of the videos that I'm trying to get out, but I'm, I'm probably just gonna do The Flash next because I'm, I'm still moving and it's getting a little crazy. I do wanna do a new Supergirl video. There's like a new trailer with footage of Red Tornado and a couple new characters. So be sure to subscribe to get that. Hopefully that'll post by like Wednesday or Thursday. The next video I post though will be Flash episode four, new Firestorm. What a coincidence that Firestorm version two is debuting the night after Firefly blows up. And I know I say Gotham is like the most comic booky show on TV right now just because the characters act like they're in a comic book. Supergirl is like a little more realistic than that, but it exists kind of kind of between The Flash and Gotham in terms of level of comic bookiness, if that's an actual word. I just invented it. We'll call it, we'll call it a word. Just in terms of reference material, to give you a picture of where, where things are headed, like in terms of the tone, Supergirl is riffing more on the Richard Donner Superman film, Superman 1 and Superman 2, more than anything else. So a lot of the energy, the comedy, the pathos is gonna flow from where those Christopher Reeve Supermans flow from. 
While you guys wait for my new Flash video to post tonight, you can click here to catch up with Game of Thrones Season 6. They just posted a new Ironborn video yesterday. And you can click here for all my Supergirl videos. I have done like four or five Supergirl videos so far. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.